Welcome everyone to Weekend Escapades. We are in Montana State Prison, historic prison. We are in the guards tunnel. Wait until you see what's next. Now the old Montana State Prison dominates Deer Lodge, Montana. And this was built in 1871, and it gets its iconic look from its turn-of-the-century style. Welcome, everyone, to Weekend Escapades. Today, we are in Deer Lodge, Montana, and we are extremely excited to go into the Montana State Prison, a historic prison. As you can see, this is the original door where visitors were able to enter in this little archway that's right off the road. A little placard up top, and where the guards used to hang out, right up there. And you can see the walkways to the left and right. All visitors, no firearms or other weapons beyond this point. Because this was how you came to visit anyone who was in the prison. A little guard tower there. Look at that photo ops for you. You get right into the old metal jail. And somebody needs to be a prisoner. Somebody needs to be the authority figure. Well, this big foundation right here was the location of the original cell house. And what happened, there was an earthquake uh, in 1960, 1959, 1960, it was torn down. And so they tore it down, And but this was the original cell house. It was all made out of red brick. And I'll see if I can find a nice photo to add right here for that building. Now in 1893, they started building this sandstone wall. Now this was built to replace a wooden wall that was here and existed originally. But with all the inmates in the prison getting larger, this was necessary to build. And this was completed in 1894. And this was the labor of all the inmates to build these giant walls around this prison. Now these walls are as high as 24 feet and three feet thick. So the thickness is there, but the height of course varies depending on where you're at, but as high as 24 feet. Now this is the out of bounds area. As you can see, it says right there on the ground. What happens if the inmates passed into this area? The guards had the right to shoot them. So the inmates had no right to come on the other side of this out of the bounds area and come into this area here. So completely out of bounds and you get shot if you come strolling through here. Now this is Tower 7, and Tower 7 became the entrance in 1911 for the prison. And in the intro, this is where I was standing, it was right on the other side of this door, this arched door right here. And you can see this is where you would enter. And the guards would climb right up that ladder to go in the guard tower. But of course a couple of big Heavy wooden doors and iron, and then gated, and then you would come in right through here. And you can see how they used to talk from the outside in to find out who was in here. You would talk right into those. And you would carry your voice all the way up to the guard tower to be able to let you in. In order to get through here, they had two keys, and they had to lower them down one at a time, and when you used one key to get in, they would haul it back up and then they would let you have a second key after the doors were locked behind you. That way the doors were always kept locked and nobody could come in or out. But they actually had to talk into that and lower the keys down manually on a rope so people could get in. And then there's this guy, he's watching the door. This is the visiting area. Obviously we could see where you could be on the benches here. And the inmates would come through there and be on the other side of this heavy chain link style fencing. We have another guard watching us right there. These are all the administration offices where psychologists and job placement uh, and social service directors would work to help the inmates after they were released from the prison, the ones that were released from prison. And this is all high security. They couldn't get in or out, of course. Everything was barred to get into this area, as you can see. But they still had nice offices to work in. 
And I think the warden's office is right through this direction. This is the dental and medical room where all of the inmates would get their medical services and dental work done. Now in 1959, there was a riot here and that escape plan was uh, smashed, but it took its toll and a couple people had perished in that riot. But one of the things is there's a wall, a tower that was uh, actually, the bazooka was fired on. And I'll show you the tower with the damage on it. But a bazooka just like that one was fired to stop the inmates from the riot. Now you can see here a few of the weapons that were used to protect the guards and keep people in order. An old Winchester and a 38 revolver. And that right there was a shell that was used in the bazooka right there. But not only the guards had weapons, but the inmates did too. And you can see some of the shanks that they made. Uh, and also somebody had some brass knuckles right there. But these are all weapons that were used in prisons or maybe in this prison. Unnerving to think they had them. Now this is the warden's office where the rioting happened in 1959. The warden was shot right at that desk. Ted Roth. So the uh, convicts came in here, shot the warden right there at that desk in that chair. So in 1908, George Rock was executed by hanging. Well, it's very similar. This is a remake of what that gallow looked like. But in this location, and then of course another uh, was hung also, William Hayes, met a similar fate. Rock and Hayes killed Deputy Warden John Robinson and severely wounded Warden Frank Conley in an escape attempt. So this is a different escape attempt, but it still happened and the executions happened right in this area on a similar gallery. This is Siberia East. And we're gonna head in those doors and see what Siberia East looks like. This is the gate and the stairs that would go up to the uh, the guard tower above Siberia East. But this is basically solitary confinement. And there's the cells right back there. So solitary confinement. You can see the heavy door here that uh, basically closed. I feel weird closing myself in. And then this door would open up, find out what was going on in here before they came in. And then this door right here, you can see the way they're locked and protected to keep anybody from reaching to grab the key. They could unlock it here. And uh, they make a little noise. There's the beds where they would have been in a very small room and dark. And another one right here. Solitary confinement. You don't want to hear this noise. And you're locked in. You can see above me the razor wire and the way it was hung on the metal overhangs that were built right into the wall. And that's what all of this angle iron is all the way around. They've took some of it down, but you can see it was all the way around the guard towers as well. You can see the original searchlight up there that used to shine on the ground to make sure nobody was trying to get out of this place. And if you did, they'd shoot you through those windows. So this is West Siberia. Difficult prisoners were kept in here and basically left alone. But it says that after breakfast, they were able to uh, get out and go in the prison yard, but they were difficult. So they were kept in these small rooms. Just a cement bed for them to lay on there. Well, those doors open up. Let's go on in. No, that's not creepy at all. We found this in one of the cells laying there. Kind of molded into the bed. There's two more little cells. Oh, this isn't a cell, this is a shower here. So they couldn't go out, so they had their own shower right here. Very 
very dark and dank shower. Now circa 1965 is when the visiting area was in the administration building. It was very confined behind bars. And so what they did was in 1970s, in that era, they tried outdoor visiting with picnic tables and then of course the guards would, would watch. But they attempted that in 1970. And this is, of course, they had their own uh, butcher shop on the east side of the main street. And these are the prisoners back then in the 1960s, butchering up the meat for the prison. So the building we're in right now kind of gives you the life of what a prisoner would uh, go through. But it's actually the infirmary building, so the medical building. And uh, this is a picture of, right here from this building, of somebody taking and getting care in bed in this building. You can see all the pictures on the walls, but that's what this building was, was the facility hospital. Now this is Ethner Field. Now this was the baseball field that, uh, and where they had, of course, all the activities, track meets and everything for the inmates. And of course, holiday activities as well. Again, with the guard shack watching the whole facility. And a giant stack. That's probably from the boiler room and the old water tower. Well, back in the day, if you were heading in this, this is where you would live, because this was your cells or your cell block where you would stay. There's the cage where the guards would be. So this is the typical cell, so it's a two-person cell, as you can see there. And there's a sink and a bathroom. Obviously, when you went to prison, you lost your privacy. And you had just a little spot there to keep some things. And some vents, probably for some heat or whatever, communication, and a mirror on the back wall. That's about all you got. And one light hanging from the ceiling. Pictures of all the prisoners on the walls and how many years they were sentenced for. And little stories about why they were in. Some of them look kind of rough. You can see this one up four floors. It looks like the first, th the first three floors are where the cells were. And I don't know what was on the top floor. I can't, oh, they were cells as well. I just can't see them. Now it was said that one time that uh, the prisoners were upset with one of the prisoners that had murdered someone and that they actually tied up a bunch of bed sheets and hung that prisoner right off this top railing. And of course it was short enough to where they hung and never touched the ground. All right, we get to go in the two person cell. You can see where the beds would fold out of the way. They just got a roll up cot. They used to do the shakedowns to make sure that nobody had any shanks or anything that they had made. Of course, to uh, damage the guards or hurt each other with. This is small, I can't imagine having two people being here. You can see they have some information stories in the time of Montana State Prison, so stories about some of the inmates and what went on. Here's a good example of what the cell would look like. They've got a towel draped over the sink and a couple of inmates staring at me menacingly right there in the beds and the shaving kit laying there. Better get that razor out of there. Well, this was locked up right here. There's a shower area behind me, but you can see right here, it, this is all the plumbing and all the piping that went all the way through the prison and all the way up for every cell. So this is how they would work on all the plumbing for the cells. You can see up here where the netting is, they called that fish row. So they, they had the net over the gate there to get into the big iron door, not a gate instead of uh, looking like this, because fish row was where all the new inmates came until they got acclimated with prison, and then they would put them in general population, which was right down here. 
So this is Turkey Pete Cell, and it's, it's a pretty famous little story. It's been around for a while. In 1918, at the age of 40, Paul Turkey Pete created, or he didn't create, he created himself a bed right here because he committed murder. And he was put in charge of tending all of the turkeys. But as he got older and a little bit more forgetful, he ended up selling all of the turkeys. And I think it was for 25 cents each, he sold the total flock. And uh, that was the end of Turkey Pete, being able to take care of turkeys. But you can see, they are uh, basically put a little shrine in here with a turkey in the back and a picture of Turkey Pete when he was younger and when he was older. And people are leaving a little bit of money right there on the bed for him. The life, the legend of Turkey Pete. It's a real story. Now this is the shower area, another one. So the other one was exposed and open out there. And I imagine that the prisoners that were a little bit more, I guess, violent or whatever, had to take their showers in the open area so they didn't have the privacy so they could watch them. But these were all the private shower stalls. So this doesn't look as bad, a little bit of privacy. Place to hold your soap right up there. And all the shower heads would have been. And you got a tremendous echo. So I can imagine with all the water running in here and the steam, this would be very loud and weird. This is the hole. And when you were a bad prisoner, you already were bad if you were in here, but if you were extremely bad and other disciplinary measures didn't uh, prove adequate, you were given bread and water twice a day and the inmate was checked on three times a day but there was no light in these cells. You stayed in the dark and bread and water twice a day until you decided you were going to act a little better. That's a terrible noise to hear and the only way to look out. I'm going to door on this one. So if common sense doesn't kick in when you're in an old abandoned prison, uh, they have to put a sign up that tells you that the bathroom facilities do not work. Bathrooms are located in the, <laughs> in the Gunport Theater. So uh, be sure if you come here, you don't use the bathroom, I guess. And of course, the wood across the doorway doesn't mean anything. Here is the chapel. You can see the cross is lit up in the front. And I found this really kind of scary. You can see here where the guards used to be right there and they could look in. And you can see there's a hallway. We get to visit that dark, damp hallway that's hidden on the other side of the wall, right outside the chapel. So this tunnel always had an armed guard posted in it. And the armed guard would walk through here to be able to keep an eye through the walls on the inmates when they were eating and in the chapel in case things got out of control. And of course there's a way to, for the guard to get out and go up there and take a look at uh, where they're eating at and what they were doing. But this is kind of a spooky tunnel to be in. And this is the chapel window that we were looking at. You'll see this metal plate would go up and down. You'd be able to look into the chapel right there. Make sure there's no shenanigans going on. Now this tunnel <laughs> is quite long and it is just solid cement and a little bit of wood. That's where we came in. <laughs> you could really have like a haunted maze down here. Look at this. This tunnel goes out as well, out to the courtyard area. It's all locked up. I don't know if I'd want to be stationed down here as a guard. And this is like the theater. You can see this theater seats in there. I'm going to turn you sideways and see if I can get in there. There we go. There's the theater. You can see there's some lights 
they're not lit up, but those would have been the lights that were in here. I think this camera's picking everything up. It looks like it films really well in the dark. And here's the last window here that we can get to for the theater. And you can see better the stage and things. Let's go in the window again. There we go. See if you can see everything in that theater. You can see right there the stage and all the seats where the inmates would be able to watch performances. Now this is barred off, but that's the last window in the tunnel that the guard would be able to look through. And you can see I'm looking through bars right here. Because this is the end of the hallway for us. Now this is a picture of the mess hall. Circa 1959, right before the riot that happened in 1959. And this is the mess hall where all the prisoners would eat. And you can see here, this would be all the inmates sitting down, ready to eat. And there it is with nobody at the tables. So this little window here in the courtyard, which is right out where they used to exercise and play and do all their sports and activities, is the canteen. So the canteen is where they used to be able to buy cigarettes, shaving cream, uh, stationery, pop snacks, food, and other items. No money was exchanged as the amount of the purchase was subtracted from the inmate's account. So the inmates had an account that they would put money in, or family members, friends maybe, and then they would be able to buy things from the canteen right here. I imagine cigarettes back in the day in the 1950s were probably the most popular thing that they purchased. Now it looks like these stairs have seen little better days, but they went up behind the canteen here. It's very uh, nice construction, but the weather here in Montana is probably taking its toll on those stairs for sure. This is the old theater here. Now we were here a long time ago in the actual traveling gallows. There's a wagon that pulled the gallows for lynchings and hangings of inmates. And it looks like, we used to be able to see in those doors, but it looks like uh, the integrity of the pillars has gotten a little bit worse. You can see it's very ornate up top there. And that's, again, the old theater that says so right over there on the wall. But it looks like they don't want us walking under there anymore. And looking at those gallows that were inside. Maybe they've moved the gallows. If I can find them, I'll definitely share them with you. Well, that's the inside of what the theater looked like. I hope you can see it well. And then there's the theater back in its heyday. And there it is now. Now right through here is another side. You can see the wall here we came through. And this was uh, 1907 to 1959, the women's prison and maximum security was right in this area. So we're going to kind of explore around in this area. The guard tower and maximum security, you can see it kind of an add-on because that one's made out of wood. A little house there. But this is the uh, 1907 women's prison right here. This is the area where the the bad girls would have been kept. Screen on the doors. The cells were still very small. And of course, it doesn't look like there was as many cells in here. Some of them are a little bit different shape. They probably got as many cells in here as they could. And here's what the guards would be to watch the facility. This one looks like a maximum security door or solitary confinement because it has the heavier doors on it that blocks them out. So when you close this, then this door would close and latch just to uh, black them out. Now you'd be able to do, look at them through the little door.
Well, here is the solitary confinement for the women. The other one must have just been for like inmates that weren't real nice or hostile. They could block them out, close the doors if they were getting out of control. But this is solitary. Oh my gosh. Terrible sound in a prison. Here's the cells. That is about seven by seven. And it echoes. You would absolutely go crazy in there with just that little window to look through. Look at that. And another one right here. So if you were going crazy in the cell, you can have a friend right next to you. Not fun. So this is interesting. So I found the handle. So here's the handle that would open the doors or unlock the doors to be able to unlatch it. This big handle right here. You just would pull on this real heavy handle. It's locked right now. And of course, it would lock and unlock those solitary confinement doors. Prisons had eerie sounds with big slamming iron and squeaking of things. Like imagine when they locked these places up at night or when you had to go to your cell. Just a horrible sound knowing you wouldn't get out until the next day. There's a little closer photo of that tower that was hit with that bazooka in the 1959 riot. And it also, this photo has been hit by a, uh, a B1RD, which is a bird dropping. And there's the tower straight up from it. You can see the notch taken out, right? There is the notch where the bazooka hit. Now that damage was caused by that bazooka fired by the National Guard. And they were firing at Jerry Miles and Lee Smart, the two inmates that led this riot at the prison at Old Montana State Prison. And it left many dead, including them and Deputy Warden Ted Roth that was shot at his desk. Now we hope you enjoyed this adventure to Old Montana State Prison. And until the next one, goodbye from Weekend Escapades.